So hello everyone, my name is Johan and I'll be joined with uh, Lagdar today. Uh, I'm going to present a uh, frictionless play onboarding in practice. So at Comet, uh, we run uh, games on-chain. So we do um, assets, uh, ecosystem and uh, the whole uh, engine of the game fully on-chain. Uh, we also build uh, protocols, uh, rental, crafting, all on-chain. And uh, we had a few games uh, with uh, some users, so we know uh, about uh, uh, handling uh, uh, a lot of users uh, in a network. And um, we know the pains of uh, creating mainstream Web3 games, um, especially in a network that have a lot of people. So for example, Polygon. Um, when we started, uh, it, was, uh, it was okay because the gas price was kind of cheap. But uh, as we grew and as all the projects joined the network, it was tough to, uh, to have a really good experience uh, as transactions were low uh, in, in terms of timing. Uh, so uh, that's the first problem that we have. The second one is a problem of uh, growing our user base. Um, it's pretty tough because we tried to uh, do uh, ads, for example, on uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter or TikTok. But uh, we spend a lot of money uh, to try to attract them, but the funnel is, is really tough. And at the end, uh, the few users that was left uh, did not, uh, it was not um, equal to the price that we pay because uh, they have a lot of barriers of entry. Uh, so we had to find another way to attract them. And uh, that's why we built uh, our own tools to make it happen. Uh, first of all, uh, Alambic Tech, which is a Web3 uh, development platform. Uh, Muster, which is, uh, which is uh, innovation-centric layer 2. Uh, and Boiler, which is a Discord app that uh, allows us to uh, manage communities. Uh, along the way, we have a few companies that uh, we, uh, we try to guide uh, and they uh, place their faith in us uh, in creating incredible Web3 experiences. So we have FDJ, Lacoste, Book and Wine. Uh, but what's wrong with Ethereum accounts? At the moment, uh, interacting with the blockchain is very painful. Um, it takes a lot of time. You have to install a wallet. Uh, um, you have to keep your seed phrase. You may have to buy a ledger. Uh, you may have to uh, buy um, crypto with fiat or in Binance or Coinbase and then move it to uh, another address. So it's really painful. And uh, at the moment, no solution combines decentralization, security and good UX. But we think in just a matter of time, for example, if we take eBay, uh, in uh, 2000, the website was kind of messy and it took maybe 20 years for them to really kind of get the right design. So we think that for Ethereum, it might take a while to do the same. And the first problem is with EOA. Uh, your private key is your account, which means that if you lose your private key, you lose your account. Uh, put it simpler, uh, it's like if you had a credit card and uh, you just lose your credit card and then you lose all your money uh, in the bank. So that's not the design that we think is sustainable for people. So we have to uh, find another option. Now, what is account abstraction? Uh, I think it's a separation of concern, meaning that uh, we now are going to change the concept. Uh, so we started with the EOA, which is the account and the signer. And now we're moving to another design with a signer and an, an account that is a separate entity. Uh, the account now is a smart contract. So we abstract the account. And it means that uh, a lot of people can have different implementation of that smart account. And it uh, provides us many benefits. So what you can do now is you can define uh, flexible security rules. Uh, you can also add a recovery uh, of accounts if uh, people lose their keys. Uh, you also can pay gas for your users with Relay. Uh, you can also batch transaction. And you can even have multiple validation logic uh, using different elliptic curves. I'll show a demo uh, later on. Now, ERC4337, uh, the new uh, ERC. Um, what it does is it standardizes the way of making meta transaction and it allows decentralization of relayers. Uh, and like smart contract wallets, it was designed to emulate account abstraction without really touching the protocol base because we know that there's a lot of things happening at the protocol layer with the merge, uh, proto and sharding and all of that. Uh, so they didn't want to modify that much the protocol. And um, we're using SAFE uh, in our implementation and uh, I think it was last week they, they they released the implementation of the ERC4237, so we might use it uh, in the future. Now, our vision of uh, account abstraction. 
For us, it depends on the context. Uh, for example, if you go to Paris, and you go to a nice restaurant, and you have uh, quite a nice bill at the end, uh, you might want to have a secure way of paying, you want to take your time, uh, so it's not uh, that much of a big deal. But let's say you want to buy bus tickets, uh, and uh, in fiat world, you might just use your card and swipe and just uh, uh, kind of not even think about it, because you know that there's a limit uh, of uh, how much money you can spend. I think it's 50 euros in France. And uh, for that kind of payment, we think it's a good idea to have another method. And that's why we tried to uh, create uh, frictionless transactions. Uh, but it's a big technical challenge for developers, as we know. And uh, we tried to crack it, and we created an SDK for that. So an overview of the solution. Um, so we have the SDK that allows us to sign messages and transactions using different methods. Uh, then the transaction is sent to a backend that can wrap it into another transaction and send to uh, a safe that then is going to uh, assess the signature and if it's valid, it's going to execute the transaction. So now a quick demo of our solution. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to put a username. So it's a bit small, but do you see it or it's okay? I can put my my biometrics, and now what it's doing is it's deploying uh, my smart wallet, so my safe. I'm gonna wait for it to uh, to register. Takes a bit of time. All right. Okay. I think it's that's the resolution. And now I can try to mint an NFT. Continue. Biometrics. And if you, if you see that, there's not even a mention of wallets, uh, nothing whatsoever, just biometrics, regular Web2 authentication. Polygon is a bit uh, crowded, maybe. All right, so <laughs> it's not pretty good to see it, but uh, now I have my NFT. Uh, and if I go to settings, I can see that I have the address of my smart wallet, uh, and I have my trusted device, which is my, uh, my Mac. I'll go back to the demo. So actually, you can try it yourself. If you scan this QR code, you can try to mint the NFT. And the challenge was to create uh, a similar experience or an even better experience as uh, like an e-commerce website, uh, but keeping the non-custodial uh, aspect of it, uh, base a solution in an open standard, WebAuthn, and also uh, have something simple to integrate uh, so uh, for our front-end that integrated the uh, RSDK, the idea was for him to do not have any trouble at all. I might keep it a bit, but right. So how does it work? So we use a web button as a signer uh, for this demo. Uh, so it's an uh, open standard protocol supported by all mobile devices. Uh, it's set by Fido and Web3C. Uh, it's using biometrics, so Touch ID, Face ID, or YubiKeys uh, for authentication. There's also uh, other options. So it's based on uh, public key crypto cryptography. Um, and the DAP never accesses the private key. So what we do is the private key is stored in the enclave of your hardware or your device. Uh, and then all the signing happens in the enclave. So the DAPs has never uh, access to the private key. And for the follow-up, I'll give the mic to uh, um, hello guys, uh, so I want to give you a bit of an overview of what's happening behind the scenes. Um, so as uh, Johan just said, WebAuthn is a web API. Um, what you can do uh, uh, with it actually is authentication, not signatures. Um, so basically what the, ba the usual flow is, the server gives a challenge, which is a random number and the client signs a big, a big payload, and this payload also contains the challenge. Uh, what we do is a bit uh, more complex, because uh, in our situation, the backend is actually the blockchain, and the challenge is a signature we want to execute. Uh, also note that the P256 curve is available, and not the, the usual one on Ethereum, the K1. Uh, so I want to give you a quick uh, intuition about what's uh, happening. Um, so the private key P is a scarce, so a number, a big number. Uh, you keep it secret. 
the public keys uh, point on the curve. Um, and the point is uh, basically the private key multiplied by the point on the curve, uh, but whatever. And we have to know that the most expensive thing on uh, ECGSA uh, signature verification is uh, actually this uh, addition. So uh, you basically multiply two, two points by two numbers, uh, two scholars. And uh, the, the, the addition is, uh, is uh, very cheap. So when you do uh, uh, addition of two points, P plus P, um, it's cheap. The doubling is cheap uh, as well. So you can uh, multiply uh, points by two. It's cheap, but the multiplication is very expensive. Um, yep. So uh, we may think that uh, the naive impl implementation is fine. So basically, you take p and you multiply p, uh, you add p uh, u times, which is way too expensive for the blockchain. Uh, so we can do this. Um, then we we use a, a less naive implementation. Uh, what we do is we take uh, the number u, we decompose it in, into bits, and for each bit of u. Uh, you do uh, a simple operation. So you, if the bit is 1, you add p, and then you do a doubling. You multiply the number of, uh, by 2. Um, if you do this, then you have only n iter iterations. So if your number is 256 bits, you have uh, 256 uh, iterations. So it's better, but it's not uh, quite good enough. Uh, with uh, this kind of implementation, you can uh, do one multiplication with uh, approximately 1 million gas, uh, which uh, I guess is feasible, but not uh, not good enough. Um, so what we chose to do is a bit more complex. So what we do is we uh, chunk uh, the u number into uh, parts of k bits, which is uh, four. Uh, so basically, you take a big number of two fifty six bits and you uh, chunk uh, you take chunks of four bits of the of this number. Uh, then what you can do is uh, uh, pre compute off chain uh, the result of the the previous uh, operations. Uh, so at this point, you have a big table of uh, a huge number of points, uh, which uh, you can upload into a smart contract on, on chain. And uh, you can use this free computation to compute the, the, the result of the multiplication. What we also do, uh, so I, I just explained how, how we can do one multiplication. But uh, as uh, seen previously, you have to do two multiplication. You have to do up plus uh, vq. Uh, so what we do, we use a, a trick called the Shami trick. Uh, to actually do only one multiplication. Um, instead of decomposing u into parts, uh, we, decompo we decompose u and v into, into parts, uh, into uh, chunks of four bits. And then instead of pre-computing pre pre points for p, we pre-compute for p and q at the same time. Um, the result of this is we have a, 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 an ECDA verification of approximately 300 k gas. And also, uh, yeah, since we have to, uh, uh, to uh, do pre-computation and uh, upload, upload this pre-computation on chain, we also have a deployment of 2 million gas. Um, and of course, if you want to have a gigachain implementation, there is a talk at ETC of uh, Renaud Dubois at, uh, of Ledger, uh, who has an implementation of uh, around uh, 70 k gas. Um, yep. Now, is it ready for production use? So yes, uh, the first large-scale integration will come uh, with our next game uh, at the end of the year. Um, but you can ask some questions. Uh, does it solve real-life problems? For example, can I use my account on multiple devices? Well, the answer is yes. So you can add multiple devices and, uh, and uh, select which one you wanna ha want to have. Uh, also, you want to ask, what happened if I broke my device? Um, so that's a big problem, but we, c we have social recovery with guardians that we can use to help you. Uh, the idea is that, uh, well, the first solution would be that we might rely on pass keys uh, that on Google and Apple accounts to back up your keys. Uh, but another solution would be to implement uh, social recovery. Um, for, for example, you can uh, designate a friend or even your hardware wallet or ledger uh, as trusted guardians. And in the event that you lose access to uh, your wallet, so you lose your keys, uh, we might initiate uh, a, recovery pro a recovery procedure uh, allowing you to regain access to uh, your smart wallet. And now in terms of uh, developer experience, um, what we wanted to do is provide uh, easy integration for developers. So here you can see with the uh, four lines of code, uh, that's what you need to uh, do the demo I just did before. Uh, and the actual architecture is kind of like this, 
We have different solutions for the signer of the SDK. We just showed you WebAuthn, there's also Web3 Auth, uh, Burner Wallet, Magic Link, and you can even build your custom interface uh, if you want. Uh, we have uh, something in the, in the repo for that. Uh, and in conclusion, I think what we tried to uh, create the best onboarding solution that best, best combines decentralization, security, and good UX. Uh, I think we did a pretty good job, but you can uh, check out docs, uh, test our SDK, and give us feedback. Uh, we'll love that. And uh, I think that's it for us.